And I'm confident that many people who don't perceive Trump to be a dangerous con man, in the way that I do, probably voted for him out of sheer exasperation. They were sick of being called racist for not worrying about Halloween costumes on our Ivy League campuses. So, so millions of these people, along with real racists, told all you whinging social justice warriors at Yale and Brown to go fuck yourselves. And can you really blame them? I mean, safe spaces, trigger warnings, new gender pronouns, getting Muslim student groups to deplatform speakers like Ayan Hirsi Ali and Bill Maher. Was that the cause of your generation? That's the trench you were willing to die in? Now, that was Sam Harris in a rare moment of lucidity concerning these many issues that afflict the modern Western world these days. I say rare because increasingly he has uh, fallen off the, the bandwagon with regards to clarity. But he's right here. He is spot on. Now, he talks about causes. Well, most of you have probably heard of James Dean, James Byron Dean. Died at the tender age of 24, and in dying so young, died as an icon, uh, particularly because he starred in the film Rebel Without a Cause, 1955 film, sort of symbolizing, representing teenage disillusionment and estrangement, both social and religious, and all these other things. A true rebel without a cause. I mean, you had an established order and a guy who just didn't really know how to fit in. But in the current year, to use their terminology, we now live in an age of rebels with causeless causes. Now, by that I mean there's no principle of uh, causation. I, of course, there's a principle of causation. There always is. By that, I mean, what is a cause? You know, a just cause, or a cause that at least can be perceived in a reasonable and rational fashion as being just. So for all their laziness and strangeness, the, the hippies who protested the Vietnam War, I mean, the Vietnam War was incredibly destructive. And in retrospect, even Robert McNamara, um, decades later, conceded that it was a quote-unquote mistake. Well, they did something, at least. They tried. Many people were against it. But the things that Sam Harris talks about, I mean, what are these things? They're not legitimate causes. They are chimeras and fictions of people's imagination, made real and given life and breath uh, through their own insanity and the insanity of their actions. You see, for a long time... People feared the violation of the First Amendment. They feared that the government might infringe on their right to express themselves. They feared that the government was the greatest danger. Most of you, even those who are not Americans, know the First Amendment. It's very brief and concise, but it explains everything. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or bridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people to peaceably, peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. Now, I want you to pay careful attention to what's going on around us. And by us, I mean in the world. This is primarily an issue in the New World, in places like Canada, Australia, and the United States, above all the United States. That it is no longer the government that people need to uh, show uh, fear towards. It, it's It's the boots on the ground. There is an inquisition out there right, that will not tolerate deviancy from their own allegedly righteous view of the world. And they believe themselves in absolute rectitude. It's not the government that is storming in on peaceful assemblies. And I'll give you an example of this. Everyone by now has heard of the uh, kafah that was uh, caused by Richard Spencer at the MPI conference, which is a white nationalist conference. Now, everyone knows, I'm familiar with the alt-right and white nationalists. I'm neither pro nor against. I'm just, I'm a neutral observer for the most part. I concede some points and others I don't. And I understand Richard Spencer. He is a master tactician. He went into this bit about hail Trump, hail victory, hail our people. Now, he did this obviously for the sake of publicity. He is a, a person who seeks publicity. That's his job. 
Now, all the while this is happening, there were apparently Antifa people who were trying to break down the doors and try to disrupt the whole entire thing. These are not government people. These are, well, legitimate fascists of a sort. Um, and here's the thing. The defining characteristic, I find, of our age in these places, such as the United States, Canada, and Australia, is that people just cannot leave well enough alone. No longer can we live and let live. This credo, this maxim, that has served free society for such a long time is functionally dead. It doesn't really exist anymore. Uh, everyone is out on a witch hunt. Now, those of you who paid attention to my talk with the young man from the, the pits, the pits of Abaddon, Berkeley, California, I mean, you heard him. Everyone wears this new religion on their sleeve. And there's, of course, there's variation. But the, the point of it is that Unlike the past, unlike coming from government, it's not coming, uh, nor is it coming from a papal authority, there are foot soldiers who are emboldened by their own delusions and fictions and chimeras to attack other people and just not leave them be. Why can they not just let the MPI conference go on? Well, because it's racist or this and that. Yeah, I mean, many of them are racist, so what? That's just live and let live. And this was, I always thought one of the best principles of American freedom in the context of the First Amendment and just, just thought in general. And, and to a greater extent, the, the Anglosphere. Live and let live. I don't agree with you, but we will agree to disagree. Who these days agrees to disagree? No. We live in a world where everything is attacked, where when there's agreement, uh, or rather when there's disagreement, uh, it must be not only addressed, but the person must be slandered ridiculed. Uh, there's no rational discourse that takes place, not even an attempt, not even a semblance of it. It is just vicious. It is kind of like the Salem witch trials, uh, which took place in the late 17th century. Not many people uh, die there, relatively speaking. I think 20 people, mostly women, but the, the, the righteous, as it were, the righteous foot soldiers, they're everywhere on the ground. And I no longer recognize the Western world, particularly the Anglosphere, and especially the United States, the country where I was born and spent the majority of my childhood in, uh, as, as familiar. It is, it is an alien wasteland. It, it, it just doesn't resemble anything I, I, I knew growing up. It doesn't resemble the history that I could have identified. And I think we need to be very clear about this, that this is probably the worst thing that could possibly happen. The inability to live and let live. I have, well, I don't have that many friends. As you know, I'm a, so, I'm a monk. But of the friends I have, I have several that I don't agree with. Coltane, uh, whom I recently caught up with. And yes, he's on semi-permanent holiday. But nonetheless, there, there are issues we just don't agree on. So we agree to disagree and we laugh it off. Every time he tells me, for example, that he wouldn't want to be a quote-unquote cyberman because he likes his roast chicken and his potatoes too much and he enjoys the pleasure of eating it. And I point out, well, uh, you know, tomorrow you'll be shitting out of your anus in a disgusting, smelly paste, and I'd prefer to avoid that. Well, we agree to disagree. I would prefer to avoid the disgusting, uh, shitty paste, and he enjoys both processes, presumably the first more than the second, but still. And it's a minor issue, as well as issues of government and function. But we, you know, we, we live and let live, and it's not a big deal. It doesn't affect the, the core of our friendship. And it shouldn't. It shouldn't affect uh, friendships, and it shouldn't affect uh, the relationships people have with relative strangers and the relationships people have with people they come into contact with. I think this is really the issue that we're facing. Uh, it's all well and good to have your viewpoint, but now... Everyone's viewpoint is an ineluctable trap. And these are true rebels with a causeless cause. You can say about James Dean that he was lost, his character at least, was a, was a young man lost. He didn't know whither and, and whence. But people like these Antifa people, BLM, these, these idiots running around protesting the, the, the Trump win, now, and why I'm not hopeful, and I've talked about these issues before, but 
really the in, in light of the Trump win, the fact that people doubled down. They, they didn't retreat to reflect on how this came to pass. If they had not approved of the Trump presidential victory, then they could have thought, ah, how did this come to pass? No, they doubled down with the accusations. And true to form, Richard Spencer won with his, it's not even, I wouldn't even say masterful uh, tactics. They weren't. It was obviously a, a publicity grab, the whole hail this, hail that. And then he played it down as exuberance. I, I, have, I have no opinion pro or con against Richard Spencer, but the fact that the, the media grabbed onto it, latched on that he had a CNN interview with one of these uh, black activists. He got other interviews and uh, Young Turks talked about it. That's exactly what he wants. And as a consequence, the alt-right has uh, grown, I imagine, quite significantly. Now, depending on what position you have, you think that's a good or a bad thing. But if you assume the libtard leftist position that uh, these are white supremacists and it's just all horrible, then they've done a very good job of propping up the alt-right. So well done, left-wing people who are ostensibly and allegedly opposed to this sort of thing. <laughs> Why? Because they could, not have, they could not leave well enough alone. It just wasn't possible. They had to cite that. They had to try to bust in there. I even think that Richard Spencer was sprayed by some strange, smelly liquid uh, at the MPI conference. And because of this, I, I, I can barely identify as an American anymore. It's true, I grew up in the United States, specifically New York City. My accent is unmistakably American, but that's about it. One thing I've always liked about Germany, and Germans in particular, incredibly stodgy, bureaucratic, and, and insipid, insipidly boring people. Just They're just not fun to be around. But... They kind of get on with their business. I mean, you have some lunatics every now and then, but for the most part, part by way of comparison, Germans just get along with their. They talk about their uh, their salaries and their businesses, their relationships. They're not obsessing about the insanity that has taken this vice-like hold on on the Anglosphere in places like Australia, Canada, and the United States. And one has to wonder why ultimately, and, and one is left to speculate why, for example, continental Europe in general, and it's, of course, different in the West than it is in the East. I'm very much, as many of you know, I'm going to Ukraine next month for not but five days, but still, it should be very eye-opening. But even in Western Europe, you, you don't have this level of insanity, not to the same degree. What is it about the Anglosphere that produces the lunacy that we've seen come to the fore again and again and again in recent years, and, and in, in particular, virulence this year. This is all going to get worse. You would have thought that Trump's victory would have given the left pause and time for self-reflection, an attempt to make amends or at least negotiate some terms with people on, say, center right or right. No, they, they, uh, they doubled down into their trenches of unworthy causes and yeah, that's basically what they've done. And when I hear stories that in New York City there are penalties for using the wrong gender pronouns in a certain context that could warrant a $250,000 fine, I'm somewhat aghast. I always knew that most New Yorkers were liberal, but I didn't realize how disgustingly delusional, uh, delusionally liberal they were, for the most part, um, for most of my life as a teenager, I was fairly apolitical. And then I latched on to libertarianism, and now I'm just sort of, I guess, a right of center nothing. But it's very strange how this has all come to pass, and how we've let it come to pass. I mean, one thing that I think is very interesting, and people have brought this up periodically, but not often, is the allowances that professors, men specifically, but I imagine women too, but much more so men, in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, men who have lived for a long time, experienced the world, at least understand it relatively well, putting up with the insanity of juvenile brats. You know, the young whippersnappers, the, the know-it-alls, your typical 18-year-old, 
in the United States, uh, be it female or male, the female versions are far more pernicious, arguably, who just countenance it all. Now, of course, there are good reasons for this in some sense. Uh, obviously, the uh, parents of these people pay their bills, or the government, because most of them are in government loans, so they can't open their mouths up. Do you see how this is all interconnected? You know, things like student debt, uh, government loans, the university industrial complex. I mean, the reality is, is that adults of that age not only have a right, but an obligation to put these fucking punks in their place. I mean, I would be worried if I, I mean, if I were harassed or accosted by these people, I don't know what I would do, but I find it infuriating that an 18-year-old who knows nothing about the world, has never left the United States, uh, has his, you know, his notebook of delusions in front of him, and then deems and sees it fit to command others who have far more experience, life experience and understanding, as to what is the, the path of rectitude and as to what is correct in the world and what is incorrect. It's absolutely insane. There was a time when people such as those would have been put in their place and they would have learned in the process and graduated the University of Life, as it were, more knowledgeable, wiser, and better for it. But everyone is afraid because the offense industry has taken over and it's tied to money and then tie, it's tied to ideology and it's tied to the general, general comfort of our time. I've talked about this many times. But there is something peculiar and particular about the Anglosphere that is absolutely maddening, and I don't recognize it anymore. I mean, I have always cherished the English language. I studied it from its inception to the current age. The etymology, the grammar. I read Beowulf in the original. The Wanderer, one of my favorite poems of yore. Medieval poem from the ninth century. And yet, this world that English encompasses is not my world. Increasingly, I want to flee east to the land of my ancestors, be it Hungary and well, the other half of my family comes from Ukraine. It might be interesting to see how life is there. Very different, no doubt. But I think whatever the comforts of the Anglosphere, it is becoming fast uninhabitable for many of us. I loathe the day I have to return to visit family, such as when my parents fall ill and die because it's become so alien. This is, ladies and gentlemen, the wasteland. T.S. Eliot in the 20s, when he wrote his poem, The Wasteland, was very concerned about the happenings of the world. Uh, this strikes me as much more of a wasteland because people are just absolutely lost in their own self-righteousness to a degree that might be unprecedented in history. And why? Because they have all the comforts and amenities that allow them to be so. And the solution here is, I simply don't know. Do we destroy everything and strike down the advancements we've made? Well, some people have suggested that. But if we do that, we could lose a great deal of progress, things that have brought us enormous benefit. I really don't know. But this absolutely needs to stop. And I don't see any signs of it slowing down because, as I said, Trump's win propelled them further, emboldened them, gave them new energy. Now they have something new to complain about. Yes, Sam Harris is right. This was a repudiation of being called racist, of, of inane insanity that is taking place in the minds of the youth. And these people, somehow, some way, must be put in their place. Adults who have authority and knowledge and life experience can no longer shirk away from this because it's, it's fast becoming an obligation to put them in their place. They must be. These, are, these will be the future leaders of the world. This is terrifying. This is utterly terrifying. And as for myself, all I feel is the whim to abscond into the shadows, some dark place far away from the Anglosphere, Ukraine or Hungary, the countryside maybe, I don't know, but I don't recognize any of it anymore. 
the United States is not my country, and I don't think it ever will be again. So, I've ranted and <laughs> spoken long enough. I hope you have a nice remainder of a weekend, wherever you might be. And I do apologize for not uploading quite so frequently. Recently, I have been beleaguered by much commercial work of other sorts, which uh, pays quite decently. And I need to put out a lot because of basically holiday season. It's just sort of seasonal. And I've been very tired physically, not sleeping well. So a lot of other things. Uh, at the gym, I had a back injury, getting older. I might need to permanently give up deadlifts. And, and, and. Anyway, I apologize for that. And hopefully, at the beginning of next month, there will be more material to come. Everyone, thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your week. And if you can find some refuge away from this insanity, then do what you can. I would strongly recommend it. You take care. Bye-bye. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.